everybody I'm back for another episode of floss tube and um, I can't believe how many how many comments I got on my first video uh, um, that I posted three weeks ago and I want to say thank you to everybody who watched and commented and liked and subscribed and found me on Instagram and stuff it was really surprising and overwhelming and wonderful and you know I, I knew my mom would watch because I sent her the link and she was like oh what's this um but it was nice I felt like I connected with people and it was wonderful uh and very surprising but um I just wanted to say thank you very much um it was unexpected, but much appreciated. And I, I tried to answer every comment. If I missed uh, one here or there, I do apologize. But um, I, I did try to check and then on Instagram as well. Um, and I had some questions and some comments. Um, and I wanted to address some of those. I Like I said, I tried to answer everything as it came in. Um, but there were some that I wanted to address on here as well. Anyway, if you did not watch my first video, I am Audrey Marine and I love cross stitch. And so I wanted to start my own series of floss tubes. I guess I did one and it went over okay. So we'll do more because some people said you got to do more. And I was like, okay, I could talk about cross stitch for another hour. Um, but I did have uh, some some specific people I wanted to say hello and thank you to um Laura the serial starter she was the first to comment and like she watched my video and and first of all the woman does not use one exclamation mark she uses like five if she uses any and I love it because I can hear her enthusiasm and her excitement and support and everything coming through so Laura thank you and I feel like we connected about more than just cross stitch. We had this whole IndyCar side conversation going on and she's texting me while I'm at the 500 and she's like, happy race day. And it was wonderful and I had so much fun. So Laura, thank you so much. You just made my day, my week. And um, it's been wonderful interacting with you and talking about cross stitch and other things. Uh, I also wanted to say thank you to Vonna Pfeiffer. Uh, you know, I found, I actually found Vonna through the Traveling Stitcher which you guys should look up if you if you don't know already. So um, the Trail of Stitcher was just someone that I found. I think she's in New Zealand, if I remember correctly. And I was like, oh, she, you know, I like what she's doing. And then she started this Cross Stitch Academy. It's not like a class or anything that you have to sign up for. But she just, like every Sunday, she would talk about a different aspect of stitching like how to choose needles and how to store your projects and and what kind of stitcher are you and she said that she was co-hosting it with Vonna Pfeiffer and I was like oh well who's Vonna Pfeiffer and so that's how I found her and she's got like tens of thousands of followers and I probably should have found her sooner anyway and Vonna thank you so much for your nice comment I would definitely love to connect it would be wonderful and I know we are not that far away from each other and Vonna um not only does she do these floss tubes but a lot of the videos that she puts out are like tutorials on how to finish things which is great because you watch them and you're like yeah I can totally do that and then you get done with it and you're like I just want to pay somebody else to do this <laughs> I just want to stitch I just want to stitch and have somebody else deal with the the like fully finishing of whatever it is um and then Samantha the Huga stitcher she mentioned me in the video that she put out after I put out my first one and she had just lovely comments and thank you so much Samantha but she did ask to see my refrigerator so I took a picture of my fridge and uh, the situation with the magnets the Mill Hill stuff that's on there um and so I should be able to I'm gonna I'm gonna do this video assuming that I can figure out how to insert photos into into this video so that that will be shown my refrigerator maybe like right now anyway i'll figure that out um but then as i go through the rest of the things that i'm going to go through today i will put the links to specific uh items products whatever in the info box that's that's under the heading here um but i also wanted to um 
say hi to Tasha because she reached out because she's a psych fan. So she liked that I said the thing about the pineapple, which was great. So hi, Tasha. Um, it's nice to connect with another cross stitch or psych fan. So that's great. That was, that was exciting. Um, but just, you know, so many nice comments and I'm really appreciative. So thank you guys so much for, for watching and then also taking the time to, um, you know, some of you told me like a little bit about how you got into cross stitching or what you've been doing or how I might have inspired you. Apparently somebody, um, Tracy saw this and then went on to one, two, three stitch and just like added a bunch of main street pieces to cards. So I love that. Um, but, so, but people were asking about this or commenting on it. This, uh, this piece back here, it's a set of nine that I did. It's Mill Hill Main Street series. And you can find them all over the place. Tons of people on Etsy sell the kits. Uh, one, two, three stitch has them, but you should be able to find them from your LNSs as well. Uh, tons of people carry Mill Hill. Um, and that I finished... A little over a year ago actually is when I had it framed um, and I just had it framed at Michael's um, I think if I had to do it in the future I would I would do it they did a good job but the green mat on top of the white mat was not connected so the green mat is kind of like buckling and you can't really see it from this angle but I can see it so I need to take it apart and adhere the green to the white or take it back to Heather at Michael's but it's really big so I don't want to schlep it around anyway so oh and then somebody asked me about this unit here and I said that I got it from Ikea this segment I got from Ikea you can buy a pegboard and I think they come in a couple different sizes and then you can buy the hooks you can buy one of these things that holds like washi tape or other tape and then these containers these are great, um, you know, the lid is what hooks onto the pegboard, but then you can take the container off, and I have Krynik in there, so they fit very nicely. But this, this segment down here, whoops, this stuff, these baskets, that was purchased from the container store. And I have a really long one with a big basket on the bottom in our hall closet that holds wrapping paper and bows and other things like that. And then I have another really long one with a bunch of baskets like this in our pantry that holds spices and small snack items and things like that. Uh, and it made a huge difference in our kitchen and what we're able to get in there. So Ikea Container Store. I know Container Store still sells this stuff. I don't know about Ikea, but I only just got that a couple years ago. So I would think that they still have that. Um, I had a lot of people commenting and telling me how nice the baby sampler was. And I just wanna say thank you again. I really do love this piece. And I found out that I go, get to go see the baby soon. So I don't have to wait until July. So Ryan and I, will be gone to France with his parents. We're leaving on Monday in two days. And we will be gone until the 14th. Uh, but then just a few days later, I'm gonna go by myself to see John and Alex and baby Luca. And they sent me some more pictures today. I'm like, oh, I wanna see that baby. I wanna smell it. And he's so cute. Um, so I get to give them their sampler when I see them on the 19th-ish, should be. And then we'll see them again in July, which is great. But I get to do that. And then uh, somebody asked about, they were kind of curious as to what the kids had picked out. So when I was talking about my boys before, uh, they're nine and 11. And years ago, they had tried some stitching, you know, just, just whatever, just fun stuff. So when I say, you know, uh, you know, bag of crap from my, Mill Hill kits, like leftover stuff, this is what it is. It's like weird extra pieces of perforated paper and lots of floss that I no longer know the color and it doesn't really matter because they're just picking things off of sight. And then this is nothing but beads. Oh, look at this. This is this is Mo's work. He, he was doing some, some practice stitches. He decided that Cross stitch was not for him, but back stitch was the way to go. So he did a bunch of stuff back stitching, which I thought was great. He he liked it. It was easy for him to do, and he was able to make you know he was able to outline like you would draw a cartoon or something. He was able to do that stuff. So this is 
this is what the kids pick from. Um, but Rue actually started a kit. So he's 11 and a couple years ago he started, I had an extra of the Mill Hill Snow Charmer and I thought, well, this is great because if you start at the bottom at the snowman's butt, it's all one color. It's all a crew and beads, simple beads. And so I taught him, well, just use a beading needle for all of it because that way you can do stitches and beads as you go along. And he did that and he got, I don't know, a dozen rows or something on the butt done and it looked good. Uh, but he kind of set that aside and it's still waiting for him if he should want to finish it. But then last year, uh, out of, you know, out of the extra stuff, he got some supplies. He picked out some threads and stuff. And this was the thing that I was talking about is on a refrigerator. I pulled it off so I can show you now. But I'm so proud of how he came up with this. So this is the little Pokemon guy. Let me try to hold it so you can see the whole thing. So Appleen, I had to ask him. <laughs> I don't know what it is. But it's like a little apple thing. And this is really what it looks like. So if you know your Pokemon or you have a card or something, you can look up Appleen. And um, he charted it. I gave him some graph paper and he charted it himself because he had worked on a Mill Hill. So he knew, you know, he knew what a graph would look like. So he did it himself. And then uh, he did, you know, the back stitching around the outside. And then the beads for the eyes, I taught him how to do a cross stitch in the beads so that they wouldn't sit diagonally, but they would sit, you can do either horizontal or vertical. And I didn't want to influence him. So I was like, well, if you do it this way, the beads will sit this way. If you do it this way, the beads will sit this way. So what do you want to do? And he's like, oh, I want them up and down. And I was like, yeah, that's my boy. They're up and down. I don't know. It's like something weird. Like, and then I also taught him to do the X's the same way as me, because I don't want to look at him going the other way. <laughs> it, would, it would mess with my brain. Uh, but that's a really, it's such a cute little piece. And like I said, I don't give a crap about Pokemon, but, but it's so cute. So it's on our refrigerator next to the Mill Hills that I have done. But the larger Mill Hill kit that he picked out is this one. He loves fish. He loves to look at fish. He loves to talk about fish. He loves to read about fish. And he loves to eat fish. I do not eat fish, but he eats fish. I think his favorite meal at Disney World was when we went to that Seas restaurant in Epcot. Is that where it is? Anyway, and so we're like sitting in our booth and there's like this huge tank of fish. And he's like eating his tilapia or whatever it is that he ordered, like a nut, with all these fish swimming around. He doesn't care. He loves fish. He wants to eat them. He wants to look at them. So he picked that out. He has not started it. Uh, but he keeps talking about it and he's like, mom, when I finish it, I'd really like to put it in a, like a birch colored frame. <laughs> he said this, he said this, a birch colored frame. And I was like, well, buddy, when you're done, we can get you the same frame that I put my Nautilus shell in. It. So this is one that I did last year. So this gives you an idea. This is the size that these kits turn out to be. They're like five and a half by five and a half. And you end up with this and you can these are mill hill frames as well and they come in a bunch of different colors uh, most of them are this size there are a few others like limited colors in just a couple other sizes and i really don't know i don't are those for like the debbie mums or something i don't know why they make those um and then i guess since i'm thinking of it i'll, I'll show this so this i bought last year this is like the first project bag sort of thing that i bought but it's small and uh, i got this on etsy from too busy sloth the digit two busy sloth her shop is on vacation right now she says she'll return in june it's june i don't i don't know when she'll reopen or what she'll have or whatever but the this size is perfect for those male hill kids because it's got it's got these little pockets and I put bobbins in them. So I would get my uh, DMC from the kits and got to separate all the colors and figure out which is which. And then I would wrap them around bobbins and then stick them in here. But this is what I love. It's got a scissor pocket with a snap and then you can put like a pencil or something in here and I never do, but the scissor pocket is great. And then for your needles and then there's a zipper 
pocket back here that's his vinyl and then another pocket back here and this is where I put the the kit as I'm working on it the piece as I'm working on it so this is part of the Christmas Village you see that it's gonna be like those ones back there this is the Christmas Village series uh, this is the cobbler but it just slides very nicely in here like it just fits so you kind of got to watch your corners there but it holds everything you need and you can just chuck it in your purse so i told my mom because i had this and took it on a trip to go visit her sometime last year and she's like what's that and i said it changed my life changed my traveling stitchy life so i would check her out keep an eye on the shop if you're if you're interested in something like this um, for male hell kits, I would recommend it because it's not huge and honestly you can put it in a smaller handbag or purse. All right. Um, I don't know where I want to go from here. Um, there was, there was a request for me to like go through my patterns and what I have. I don't want to do that. I don't want to just sit here and show you a bunch of patterns. But I did take inventory the other night and uh, I included I included everything that I've already done um, and I found that I have just over 130 patterns and I can hear Ryan's head exploding. But most of those are Mill Hills. Well, I should say like a little over half are Mill Hills. And then, um, and most of the Mill Hills I have completed. And then a lot of the other ones, like the 50 or 60 other patterns, are smalls, I would say. Like other ornaments, um, or like these just nan mice. <laughs> so cute. This is Juliet and Romeo's back there. But anyway, so, you know, this, this takes two days to put together. So a lot of the patterns that I have are smalls. It's not like I have 130 hands across the sea patterns. Although I would like that. But um uh so I took inventory and I went through just to kind of remind myself of what I had. Um but as I say a lot of what I have are are Mill Hill patterns. And I I don't know that I'm ever gonna make another of the Mill Hill ornaments that I have made. Like I love them. And I guess if I wanted to have a set for each of the kids after I die, if they care, then I would have to stitch another, right? But I'll show you. This is how I keep my this is how I keep my Mill Hill ornament patterns. So I after I'm done with it, I'll put the pattern in here. And I moved this up so that you can't see the pattern, but usually this guy's farther down. So this is the front picture comes with the pattern and then I save the beads like I'm gonna read like I'm gonna do this again I don't know that I'm gonna do this again and even this floss in here where did I save my floss I'm gonna take that out and add it to the bag of random stuff so I've got my Santas in here and then I've also got um like the angel trilogy the angel trilogy, you know, those three are in here and the wise men in it. So this is how I keep my Mill Hill patterns because the patterns are on an eight and a half by 11. So they fit very nicely in this binder. That's how I keep those. Everything else and the other patterns are in uh, these plastic totes that I got for real cheap at Michael's. I've got all the Mill Hill, like yet to be completed Mill Hill kits in one little tote. And then another small tote has the linen, you know, my linen stash, which is not very big, good. Uh, and then a larger, taller tote has the larger patterns. Like, you know, the Just Nan patterns tend to be larger. They're like eight and a half by 11 or a little bit bigger. And so I had to get a slightly bigger tote. And, and, um, and I have those in there. So maybe one day I'll like pick a designer, probably Just Nan, because besides Mill Hill, I have more Just Nan than anything else, but go through and show you guys what I have. 
So I did that, went through my inventory. So I was feeling really bad actually about, oh my God, I have too many patterns and I can't keep buying more and this is awful. But then I went through my inventory. I was like, no, this is fine because most of the patterns I've yet to stitch are really small. So as I say, it's not like I have patterns for giant samplers and so I feel like everything that I have, you know, I could actually finish it within the next few years or something. So, and then some of them I got for, for free, not a bunch, but some of them. So that was, that was another thing. I went to visit my mom, stayed with her for the weekend. Um, when was that, Ma? I don't know, a couple weeks ago. And, uh, she went through, she had one drawer that was full of cross stitching stuff. It wasn't a very big drawer. It's not like she had tons and tons of stuff, but she found a few things that she forgot that she started. And then she found some other things that she decided, I'm never gonna make this. And then um, she she gifted a couple of the patterns to me. She was like, here, you take this, I'm never gonna make it. So one of them was this Permit of Copenhagen. It just says blue sampler. I don't think that it has any other name besides this. So she gave me this, it's pretty cool. It's got lions holding swords. And you have to say swords, like in Aladdin. Yeah. Anyway, so that's cool. I will say that like Perman, like the pattern is not, it's not printed on the nicest paper. Wish it were a little thicker. And then she, she, she was like, well, you, will you make this for me? And I said, yes. And then I immediately regretted it. But then we talked on the phone the other day. She's like, are you actually going to make that? And I was like, well, I don't want to make it, but I'll make it for you. You're not going to make it, are you? And she's like, no. And I said, okay, well, you'll get it on your deathbed. And she's like, okay, great. Just in time. And I said, yeah, I'll give it to you. And then you'll flatline. <laughs> and she laughed so hard. <laughs> so this is, this is Tur Turkish Delight by Ink Circles. I've seen a lot of their patterns and they're visually interesting, but I just don't, like, they're not my thing. I don't really care for them. It's like, it's, it's trying to be a Quaker because it's got medallions, but like not quite. So I don't know. Also, this one calls for seven skeins. Oh, it says Belle Soie. I thought it was Gloriana for some reason, but it's still not cheap. I mean, you could do the DMC, but if you want the variegation, then you should do like the overdyed cottons or something. Anyway, so we'll see, Ma. You might get it. Don't hold her breath. That's why I told her, because I had asked her over the years to make some things for me. Because, as I say, she knits like nuts. And she quilts and stuff, too. And over the last decade or something, I've asked for a few things. And I get them or I don't. And I told her the other day, I was like, I'm not asking you to make anything else. Because cause she's got other friends who ask her, like, if I give you the yarn, will you knit this? And she does it begrudgingly especially when they give her acrylic yarn don't buy my mom acrylic yarn she hates it like amy sedaris uh so i told her i'm not asking you to make me anything else because i don't want to make things that i don't want to make like i will make things for gifts but it's also because i enjoy making it and i like the pattern or the product or whatever it may be so Another thing that she found in the drawer was this hands-on design, which I swear to God, I had almost bought. But then I thought, I don't need another pattern. And then she pulled it out of the drawer and she's like, well, this is, and I like whipped around and I was like, oh, I want that. And she's like, okay, well you can have it, but you gotta make me one too. And I don't think this is gonna be overly large. How many stitches is it? I don't know. I took it out to check. It It's not huge. It's not huge. So I could make a couple of those. Anyway. Oh, okay. And so my husband, the broadcaster, the night that I posted my first floss tube, he comes home from the track. I guess he must have been at IMS that day. He was somewhere that day. And he comes home and he's like, I'm tired of talking. I just want to listen to you talk. And I said, oh, well, if you want to hear me talk, then you can watch my floss tube. And he was like, oh, okay. And I was like, 
it's like an hour. And he was like, you talked about cross stitching for an hour? <laughs> Like, yeah. And so he watched this and he had some notes. Like, you know, Audrey, do you do you have any crutch words? And I said, Yeah, I said anyway, 87 times. And he was like, Okay, well, as long as you notice that. And so my goal was to say anyway, far less frequently, but we'll see how we do. <laughs> He said he's he's returning the favor because he will he will go away on a work weekend and whether it's for IndyCar Radio or the TV stuff that he does for SRO I will watch some of the broadcasts or listen to some of the broadcasts and I'll I'll text him it's like Friday it's the first day of the weekend and I'll text him and I'll say you've met your quota for tremendous you have to pick a different word and so that's kind of our joke like he he said that anyway was my tremendous I'm not allowed to use it anymore but you know who cares you guys came back and and watched the second one right right you like the first one so much you're back again we hope <laughs> Okay, so what else do I have to show? Oh, so it's June. So Stitch Mania is over. Thank God I survived that. How do people do? Like 23 items for Stitch Mania 2023 or 31 items for every day in May. I have no idea. But I did, I started five new projects. Uh, One on every Monday in May. And the first, the first one, okay, so like I ironed everything, so it'd be all pretty. Let me move this. I ironed the first one, or I ironed all of them actually. So, but the first one that I did was Thistle House. And now I'm wondering what I did with the pattern because I wanted to show you Way to go, Andre. Where's the pattern? Absolutely no idea. Okay, well, find it or I won't. <laughs> so the, the one that I started on the first Monday in May was Thistle House by Plum Street Sampling. Plum Street Samplers. This is 40 count uh, with the called four threads except the purple on the thistles was actually supposed to be this pink. Now, if you are familiar with the pattern, which I wish you could be, what did I do with that pattern? I can hear my mom having a heart attack. She's like, why aren't you prepared? Well, ma, crap happens. I don't know what I did with it. What did I do with it? I brought it in here. Oh my God, this is going to drive me nuts. It's driving me nuts. I've got the other ones. Oh, okay. All right, all right. Well, I don't know. I don't know. It's gonna drive me bonkers. I'm gonna find it as soon as I'm done recording this. Uh, so the original pattern, this is in the original pattern. But then it also has this band down here that's like flowers and grass or whatever you wanna call it. And then there's supposed to be a lady over here. Well, the lady wasn't speaking to me. So I took the lady out. And then I stitched in some extra leaves and birdies to compensate here because I had an idea that uh, since it was Thistle House and it was like sort of Scottish-ish, that I would put a little phrase relating to Scotland. And I thought about using the motto for the Murray clan, which is mine, but it was really long. So I chose the Latin, that's like the Scottish national motto. So it's Nemo me impune lacessit. And Brian, I don't wanna hear anything about my pronunciation of Latin. It's a dead language, nobody cares. Uh, and I used, I used a font from another piece that I was working on. I basically just copied it and I'll show you that in a moment. And then I kind of made the letters go up and down like this because that was the only way that I was gonna be able to fit him in this segment here because Lacessit is very long. So I kind of went like this and because 
because of how the letters are shaped and because I did them like up and down like that, it's kind of giving me a Harry Potter vibe, which I wasn't actually going for. And then this is just AM, my initials, and then that says 23. But it's funny, I was stitching this. So it means um, nobody, nobody wrongs me without impunity or with impunity. I'm going to look that up. I'm so confused. Anyway, um, ah, there it is. <laughs> so I was stitching this thinking that, oh, you know, people usually stitch things and it's like home sweet home or bless all who enter and stuff like that. And mine is basically the Scottish equivalent of don't mess with Texas. Like be nice or get out. It's kind of what it is. So that made me chuckle. So I don't know. It's cute. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Am I going to frame it? Am I, I might just make it into like a standing form. You know, people do those folded pieces. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. <sighs> I thought I was so well prepared for this video and now I feel very not prepared. Because I didn't brush up on my Latin and I can't find a pattern. <sighs> okay, so that's, that was Stitch Mania start number one. Stitch Mania start number two is A House Is. This is a pattern I got off of Etsy, a PDF pattern, and it's from a shop called Stitches Through the Years, but I think that's too long, so it's Stitches Through YR is what it is. But if you look up a house is cross stitch pattern, whatever, on Etsy, you will find it. So it's not done, but I, I got a good start on it. Now, the original pattern has this phrase, a house is made of wood and stone, but only love can make it a home. And then it has this house and not all the flowers and stuff are done. And I didn't finish the birds and like there are pieces missing here. But this border is actually supposed to be right there. But what I did was I extended the border and I stitched this so that I knew the math would work out. And then I added, so that gave me enough room down here to add our names and our wedding date and the city where we got married, Indianapolis. <laughs> I cannot tell you. I spent so, so, like every letter that I did in Indianapolis, I was like, is this spelled right? Is this spelled right? I thought I was gonna leave a letter out. So, and I know some of you at home are doing math and trying to figure out the deal with the kids and everything. Cause I have a nine year old and 11 year old, but Ryan and I got married in 2019. So I was married previously and it was, suboptimal we'll say so I got out of that <sighs> and the third start for stitch mania so I breeze right past that is simply summer by the drawn thread this is a finish and I chose you know I wasn't just gonna pick five big starts because you'll see my fifth one and laugh uh I wanted to throw in a small one in there that I thought I could finish. And, and I did finish this in, I think I finished it like eight days after I started it. And it made me feel really good. Cause I didn't, it was, you know, one whip fewer than, than I, than I had going. Cause as I said in my first video, I usually only have one or two products going at one time. Cause it drives me nuts if I have too many. I feel like I can't, I can't keep track of it or I, I can't, you know, if I'm, if I'm dividing my time between six, eight, 10, 20 projects, then how am I ever going to get anything done? And I know people have that many projects or more and they still get stuff done. It's just, you're kind of, you know, you're extending how long it takes. Like they still finish a lot of stuff in a year, but the stuff that they're finishing in this year might be things that they started two, three, five years ago or something. I don't want to wait that long. I it, it means that I'm going to wait longer to start a project that I'm really excited about. But once I get to that project, then I know that I'm devoting a lot of my free time to that project. And that's what I like. I just want to see progress quickly. That's just how I am. So the Traveling Stitcher, when I talked about the Cross Stitch Academy, one thing that she talked about was... Um, 
what kind of stitcher are you? And you should go back, you should go to her if you're not already following her, or Vonna Pfeiffer, and just kind of read about the different types of stitchers. And I realized that I am a progress stitcher. I want to see progress. I want to see that crap is getting done. So I'm very happy that this is finished. And this is, this is on 40 count as well with called four threads. That's, that's cute. And I think, uh, th this is simply summer. So there are three others for the other seasons. And I was thinking that instead of having it professionally framed and like you know backed with the paper and everything I thought maybe if I could find a frame that would fit it and then I could change out the seasons and like stick it on a console table that we don't have we don't have any furniture I mean we have living room furniture but it's like sad decade-old Ikea furniture so <laughs> Ryan, Ryan asked me one time he's like well we could buy furniture this year or we could go on vacation I was like yeah let's go on vacation we don't have a lot of furniture. But then also, he has a cat, and she gets up on everything. And she has a tendency to just run off with whatever the heck she wants. She steals the kids' toys. She'll run off. It's like she, oh my gosh. So I don't want to have, so I think about all these little, like, kitschy things that I could have. You know, uh, like, little pin pillows and little mice and things like that. I'm thinking, even if I had furniture on which to display them, like a console table, she won't. She, I she she won't let them sit there. Anyway, ah, there it is. Uh, so that was start number three for Stitch Mania, and start number four for Stitch Mania. Oh my gosh, this is why I'm, this is why I made notes. Do you guys remember? Oh, feast of friendship. It's up here. I forgot to iron that one. Oh, look, there's the Thistle House. Jesus. <sighs> okay, we're going backwards. It was under that stupid Nautilus shell frame thing. Guys, I'm losing my mind. Okay, so we're just going to jump backwards here real quick. So this is what it's supposed to look like. You know, see, I wasn't digging the lady. And I thought about stitching the band on the bottom, and I might still do that. I might still choose to do that, but I don't know. I think it looks good as is. Okay. Boy, you know, I thought it was cool enough in here, and then I come in here, and I'm sitting here, and I'm all worked up and talking, and now I'm, I'm spitzing. Okay. So, those were the first three starts. So, the fourth start, and look, be proud. I got it on a ring. <laughs> all my floss for Feast of Friendship. This, this is a whip that looks really goofy because there's this giant pumpkin, and there's this thing, and you're like, what is that? Well, it's part of a house. <laughs> the pumpkin looks good. The pumpkin looks good. This is this is the pattern. That's really cute. That's a pineapple. That's for you, Tasha. It's it's a cute pattern. I, I'm not. Oh, I'm not in love with the thirty six. And thirty six count linen. The coverage is fine, and even for my last Stitch Mania start, stitch no, or start number five, I bought 36 count fabric with that. And I was like, I don't wanna do it on 36, I don't wanna do it on 36, I don't like it. It's not high enough thread count. And, but then I had already bought the fabric, and so what am I gonna do with it if I'm not using it for these projects? And I was uh, watching old episodes of Brenda and the Serial Starter. And Laura was working on some project and talking about, well, it's on 36. So do I want to restart it on 40? I'm using one thread over two on 36. And Brenda was like, it's fine. So I feel like you're speaking to me, Brenda. It's fine. Just do one thread over two on 36. It's not the end of the world. I mean, it's, it'll, it'll be really cute when it's done. I just gotta work through it. And understand that going forward, I will probably not be buying any more 36. But it's fine. My fifth and final start for Stitch Mania. <laughs> mm, that's it. <laughs> Those are the stitches. Those are the stitches. 
stitches because as I said, this is 36 and I'm like, I don't want to do it on 36. I don't like it. But it actually looks fine. And you know, the pattern says on the back, Audrey, the model was stitched on 36 count hog bristle, which I believe is a fox and rabbit, right? And they use Weigart and this is Weigart. So it's fine using one strand of floss over two linen threads, except we're noted. So if Paulette can do it and Brenda says it's fine, I'll just go with it. I do really like the colors that are used. Now they're in a big mess, so I'm not gonna show them to you. But the colors, um, I chose the called for when I could. I kitted this up at Persnickety Stitchers in Zionsville and she had some of the colors and she didn't have some of the others. So I just kind of fudged it and I, I like what I chose. So I think it'll look really nice. This is such a cute pattern. It's so cute. So I'm just gonna use the 36 and suck it up. All right. See, I'm already at 40 minutes, Ryan. He's like, how can you talk about cross stitching for an hour? And I was like, that's kind of a short video. <laughs> oh. So I am, I'm, I feel good about what I got done for Stitch Mania this year, right? It was my first Stitch Mania. I went a little crazy, but not, we're still figuring things out. Still figuring things out. And then um, some other whips that I have. Um, there were a couple little things that I started and it was like, I'm not really feeling this. So I'll come back to them later. One was a B score new for my mom. Act surprise, mom. You picked out the pattern. You picked out the pattern when I was making that giant order on one, two, three stitch. So anyway, you'll forget about it again by Christmas, by the time I give it to you. Uh, but I wasn't feeling it. And then another, another one of the whips that I had been working on is this. This is Spring Quaker by Lila Studio. I really like this pattern. I really like it. It's been really fun to stitch too, because there's enough, there's enough different colors to keep it interesting. And um, I've chosen all variegated threads, even though the pattern calls for some variegated and some DMC, I said screw it and we're doing all variegated. Uh, so I, I like that. I've been enjoying it. It's funny though, because I bought the pattern like a year ago at Always in Stitches, which somebody asked if I had been there. And yeah, I, I went there last year for the first time and it was overwhelming. Uh, but I've been at, um, one time since, I believe. So the Huga Stitcher, she started to stitch along in October, I think is when she started it. But I only just started watching her videos uh, within the last few months I think and she was talking about this stitch along she was doing I was like that looks familiar oh my god I have that pattern and so I I picked it up and and uh I I had to buy fabric and I had to buy the threads but I think I've made pretty good progress since I started this mid-April I think I'm about halfway done I I really like it this is on 40 count I think you know that's my wheelhouse I like 40 count I like the coverage that you get with one thread and I really like this. Look at this bird, it's so funny. It has, okay, so a couple annoying things about this pattern though, a couple of disappointments, was that I was looking through it and this little bunny, he was here and the little greens were there, but there was no carrot. Not only was there no carrot on the pattern, but there was no orange on the required thread list annoying. It's not the end of the world. I got glazed carrots by Classic Color Works. I thought that was funny. I picked it in part just because of the, the name. Uh, it's kind of a lightish orange color, but I've seen carrots that color. I pulled some out of my garden that color and thrown them to the muskrat because they smelled weird. He's very happy. We have a muskrat living in our back. We have a pond behind our house and <laughs> I named him Moses because he lives in the reeds. <laughs> I thought this was very funny. Uh, so we have muskrat and we had this giant carrot that we pulled out of the veg bed one year. And I was, cause I kind of forgot to pull the carrots, you know, and you just see these fluffy greens and they look pretty in your veg bed. And I wasn't really worried about it, but I yanked this thing out and it was a mammoth. I was like, it smells a little, 
and I'm not going to eat it. I'm not going to feed it to the kids. So I chucked it in the pond, and it was shortly thereafter that we saw Moses the muskrat swimming away with this giant carrot. He's, I think he was very happy. Now we've got a bunny. We've got multiple bunnies in the backyard, in the veg bed, a little baby bunny who is either stupid or fearless, maybe both, because he doesn't run away right away when he sees us, but then there's a, there's a larger adult bunny that is in the backyard. And even when I come to the window, he, he runs off, but they eat our lettuce and stuff. And I don't really mind because they're so cute. They're so cute. So uh, that was one thing. You'll find the correction for this on Lila Studios website. And then also these flowers, the, all the petals are missing off of the pattern. I got to that and I was like, oh, that's annoying. Um, but then, you know, I made my own mistakes because this H was supposed to be two rows lower. And because it's where it is instead of where it's supposed to be, this bit right here where a butterfly is supposed to go it's not going to quite fit the butterfly but i wasn't digging the butterfly anyway so i'm just gonna put like another little medallion i'm gonna i like this one so i'm gonna put that same thing over over where that butterfly was gonna be and there's a precedent for this because there are some other things that are repeated like all these eight pointed stars those are you know they're all the same all the way around so i figured i can repeat some things and then down here there's supposed to be a butterfly here as well and as I say, I just wasn't feeling it. So I think maybe I'm going to put like the year that I stitched this or something in that little bit. And there are also supposed to be a few bumblebees around the side. There's supposed to be a bumblebee here and somewhere else. And then me, and then on the other side as well. And I don't know if I'm going to add them in. But I love the medallions. And I can't believe how much progress I've made. I've taken this on several trips even to a racetrack and so easy to stitch because you don't have a ton of color changes. You know, this is multiple threads. You will, you will run out of thread on your needle before you have to change your color. Anyway, it's been very easy to stitch, enjoyable to stitch. And Lila Studio came out with another Quaker. She has the Holiday Quaker and the Halloween Quaker that's the spring Quaker and this year she released the summer Quaker which is cute but I think it would be more appropriate if I lived in a beach house so I got crabs and seashells on it and a mermaid I think which I'm also not digging and that's another thing so you know just change whatever you want like it's not a reproduction sampler I think if it were a reproduction sampler you're like oh I really gotta stick to it and you know harken back to the original but when it's an original design now like this one has a little mermaid. I'm just gonna put some more fish in there. Just I don't, I don't, I don't understand this obsession we've got with mermaids here. I'm very Eliza Schlesinger on this point. I don't want to be a mermaid. I don't care. I loved the Little Mermaid growing up, but I don't want to be a mermaid, and I don't need mermaid stuff. So, some changes I'm making along the way to some of the things I'm working on. All right, and I thought. Maybe I would show some uh, some other finishes that I that I have completed. Um, this was on my list of things I was going to show. This is the cobbler. I showed it earlier in this video just to kind of give you guys a better idea of what those pieces back there would look like. So it's all DMC. It's all DMC and it's three strands of thread but it's on 14 count perforated paper. It's super easy. Now I use the beading needle even for just the stitching, just because the, the needle that is included, now of course you can use your own nicer needles, but when doing these Mill Hill kits, I usually just use the needles that are included. I use the beading needle, but the, the stitching needle, the non-beading needle that they include is really big. And so when you get to a point where the hole is filled from four different stitches, it's hard to get that bigger needle through there. So I use the, the beading needle for everything. But they come with all the DMC you need and then all the beads and stuff. And then you get a little button to add. Additionally, this Nautilus was supposed to have a button on it as well. A, it's like a star, 
kind of this color, burgundy color. And I just wasn't feeling it, so I didn't put it on there. But I thought it's a reddish star, so maybe I could put it on some patriotic piece that I do later on. I think that would be really cute. So, um, These take me about a week, but I don't have a day job. So maybe a little longer for people who are contributing to society. Or you can stitch at work, like I used to do. My boss didn't care. Uh, and then this one is something I picked up at Persnickety a while ago. Um, this is the Sweetheart Tree. I think they've been making patterns for quite a while. And they've got this series, this Itty Bitty Kitty series. And they're so cute. And I want them all. See, there are two others. There's a Christmas and a Halloween. And it's like the same cat. They just put different stuff around it. But this took me like a whopping, you know, 24 hours from start to finish. This is on 32 cream something. I, th this was like a scrap that I bought from Persnickety for a couple bucks. And I was like, oh, that'll, that'll work for, for this little kitty. And I would like to, I would like to have it finished in a pillow. But I suspect I'll be doing it myself. You know, I watch Brenda and the Serial Starter, and she gets, Brenda gets all these, these finished objects back from Joy. I'm like, I, I want a Joy. You know, I was thinking, like, do you want to pay somebody to fully finish off your stitched items, or do you want to do it yourself? Do you want to save the money, or do you want to save the time? I'd really just rather save the time. I would. But then you watch Vanna's videos and you're like, I can do it myself, but I don't, I don't want to do it myself. Vanna, are you taking new clients? <laughs> I just, like, this, this has been sitting in a box for too long. I really just need to finish it. But then also, I want to get different backing fabric. Ma, you got some, some like reddish fabric that I could back this with? I know something from one of your like fat quarter things would work because it's so tiny. This thing is like two inches by two inches. So that's cute. These itty bitty, this is the only one I have from in this itty bitty kitty collection and I want them all. They're so cute. But I picked this one. Well, actually this was the only one that she had at the store in Persnickety, but I picked it because A, I love tulips and B, Ryan had, I should have done, should have done A and secondly, my mom would have lost it. If you've seen 16 Candles, you'll love that. Um, so I love tulips. Ryan's got a black cat. And if you heard whining before, that was her. And then the, the windmill, so tulip time in Holland. So Ryan's grandmother is actually from Holland, Michigan, and, and she's got a house up there. And we go up there sometimes for vacation. And that's where we're actually going, taking our kids and meeting John and Alex and baby Luca for a little, you know, R&R &R early this summer. Anyway, that's, that's why I loved it. So I'm not Dutch, but I'm adopting the Dutch heritage. Oh, I should say that Ryan's grandmother, she actually is of Dutch heritage. She's not just from Holland, but she's, she's a De Vecht. That's what it is. She's a De Vecht. So that's cute. I would like to do more sweetheart tree pieces just because they were so cute and so easy. You know, I will say, as much as I like the 40 count linen, this was so easy to stitch on because you could, like, see what you were doing even behind it. So, super cute. Okay. Well, um, I'm almost at an hour here, but, you know, I think I'm just gonna, I think I'm just gonna keep going. Uh, I made a couple purchases. Made a couple purchases. And I kind of hinted at one thing in particular. I... I called the attic and I placed an order and it was very exciting. I, I called and um, this lovely little lady named Barb picked up. She was nice as pie. And uh, I called and I, I said I'd like to place an order and this is what I'm looking for. And, and she, she helped me out. Um, but then we just kind of 
BSed for a little while and she said, well, have you ordered from us before? And I said, no, this is my first time and I'm very excited. And she's like, oh, well, let me get your information. And she, you know, I can tell she's sitting down and taking all my info and processing that credit card. <laughs> but I called because I wanted to purchase my first Hands Across the Sea. I have seen their patterns for years, even before I started stitching on linen. Like I've been aware of them and I have loved them, but they're kind of intimidating, right? So if you hadn't stitched on linen before, you're like, oh God, I'm never gonna be able to do that. Um, but since I've been stitching on linen and since I've been loving 40 count, I figured I could call and I could get this and I could get the 46 count. And I did, I, I got Hannah Campbell. When I saw this was released and all that red, I love this so much. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And when, when I called the attic, actually that day I was thinking, well, maybe I should get Maria Ewan because she was, she's the queen of the bay and it's like this new big thing and isn't she pretty? And yeah, she is. But then I went back and I looked at Han Hannah Campbell, you know, I was like, am I going to get tired of all those reds? And then pff, I looked at it. I was like, no, I love this. I love it. I love it. So I got this and then I requested one linen and they didn't have it. And so I, Barb was like, well, I can, you know, how about this? I was like, fine, Barb, you know what you're talking about, right? So I got 45 count Legacy in Thai iced tea. And then I got the 103s. So cool. Aren't I cool? Yeah, I'm excited to stitch with these. You know, I wanted to get a couple stitches in this today before I recorded. But I got really antsy this morning. I was like, I got to record. I just got to get it done. I've been like nervous and freaking out about this but I can't record this at 7.30 in the morning because the light on the side of the house wouldn't be good. But I couldn't put any stitches into anything. So I wanted to be able to say on this video that the 103s are amazing and I love stitching with them, but I'm sure they are, you know, rave reviews from um, Brenda and a bunch of other people and they're beautiful. And I stitched with the Belle Swa silks for houses the piece that has my name and Ryan's name and our wedding date and stuff. So I've used silk. I imagine that these will be at least as nice as the Belle Soir, but I anticipate they'll be nicer and smoother. So this on 45 count, I think I'll be able to handle it. And I'm very excited about this. I'm very excited. I want to take it to France with me because Ryan and I are leaving in two days. Oh, I got to figure out what I'm taking with me. I don't know. I don't know. But... It might be a little overwhelming. One thing I am taking to France though, um, I saw Brenda and Laura talking about this, this cuckoo sampler. And uh, it's it was dedicated to them by the designer because of Brenda's cuckoo clock that goes off. <laughs> but I liked it because it reminded me of Aunt Amna's cuckoo clock did she, was she like 99, mom? How old was she when she passed away? Anyway, she had this really, I mean, they're loud, those cuckoo clocks. And she had one in her living room. And it was one of those things when we went to visit them for Thanksgiving, because they live downstate. And, you know, you got to sleep in the living room on the cot or the floor or the couch or whatever it was. They had this tiny little house that they lived in for 70 years. And... I was like, oh my God, that cuckoo clock is so loud. And then you're out and you don't hear it when you're sleeping at all. And I told Ryan that I wanted a cuckoo clock. I told him this years ago. I was like, I want a cuckoo clock because Aunt Anna had a cuckoo clock. And they're ridiculous and beautiful and loud and goofy. And I really want one. And he was like, oh, well, you know, we'll buy one when we go to Bavaria. Ryan, we still haven't been to Bavaria. Just let me order one online. They're like a few hundred dollars and they come from Bavaria, but you don't have to go there. Just let me order one. I don't know where we're gonna put it. So all this to say that I really liked this. It's so small and it's only one color. And I've already got 
linen and thread picked out. Uh, another purchase that I made was from number 12 Stitch Co. I was watching an episode of Brenda and the Serial Starter and they were, they were so excited about these new linens they got. And they were saying the names and I was like, wait a minute, those sound really wallaby. It's like, I have heard of this. So I go on to Etsy and in my favorites, the stuff is already there. So I, I did make a purchase. I figured they're so excited and it's all Zweigart based, but the colors are fabulous and they come all the way from Dunanda. So it did take 10-ish days for them to get from Australia to me, but I didn't think that was bad. And Nicola, who is the proprietor of Number 12 Stitch Co., she shipped it all very nicely in a little compostable package, which was very nice. I appreciated that. Uh, but I chose, let's see, this is Wallaby. And this is what I'm going to use with Weeks Dye Works Chestnut for the, for the Cuckoo Sampler. I was thinking about doing it in like a really ugly olive green like the swan chair, Ma. Aunt Amna had this hideous swan chair. And my mom was like, I really want that chair. Well, now Dave has it, okay? But Ryan's grandma has the same hideous chair. And I'm sure somebody watching this has that same chair. And they're like, oh, I love it. I know, it's like, it was the 60s. Whatever. But I decided to go with brown. I figured brown would be better. Brown would better fit my imaginary aesthetic that I have in this house, right? As I say, I don't really have anything up on my walls. Uh, and then I also ordered Antiquity. This is a nice basic sampler color. It's kind of a creamy color, like more on the yellow side than on the brown, but it's not, it's not bad. And then this color, I have no idea what I'm going to do with it, but I loved it. So I bought it. Woodland Pine. And her prices were very reasonable. So... I think you'll be satisfied with her. And then I got, of course I had to buy cereal starter. Now I didn't just buy this because of Laura, but that didn't hurt. I, I do really like this color though. It's like a creamy, it's got like a slight pinkish tone to it. Yeah, like me when I'm not all worked up. And then this color, this is French pear. And I got a, a quarter. Wait, that's, yeah, this, because the other ones were eights. Um, I thought I would, you know, people do those red work pairs and blue work pairs. I thought I would get those patterns and then do them in green. And then I have to watch Vana's tutorial again and convince myself I can put those things together. So another thing is, is that I don't own a sewing machine, nor do I know how to use a sewing machine. So everything that I do will have to be hand sewn, which is fine because I think I'm pretty good at hand stitching things, you know, making them strong, tight, good stitches and everything. It's just time consuming, right? Other than just under the machine. So I'm very happy with those purchases. Uh, and then one other thing I bought that I will mention, uh, I bought this from Curry Bungalow and it is super cute. So it is a pin cushion, weighted pin cushion and thread catcher. So it's not like I really needed it, but I kept putting my needles down in like a bowl over here and let's not do that. So I thought, Audrey, you can buy a pin cushion, a proper pin cushion. So I, I picked one out and then there was an issue with the mail and somebody at the post office got a free pin cushion. It's okay, Etsy reimbursed me, it's all good. Uh, but Terry, who owns Curry Bungalow, she was very nice, uh, very understanding. And she like, you know, held my hand throughout the process when we were dealing with the, you know, customer satisfaction issue through Etsy. And Rudy at Etsy helped, um, had no problems. I got my money back. But as I say, somebody at USPS got a free pin cushion. But this one, this is Lori Holt fabric. I just love it. And the pin cushion, it is secure. It is not going anywhere. It's filled with crushed walnut shells and then it's on this stiff board 
And then this is that rug, sticky, like, rug pad thing that you put down so your rug doesn't move. Anyway, that's a delight. It's sitting on the edge of my desk right here, and it's already catching threads. It was a great purchase. <sighs> so, yeah, speaking of the haul, so... Like I say, I, I try not, I'm trying not to buy a ton of stuff, but I wanted to treat myself to uh, a hats kit from the attic. And as I say, my, I, I sent the link for my first video to my mom and she watched it. Now she's told me she's watched it like six times. I was like, mom, that's too many. You've got to be sick of me by now. But, but she's also been watching other floss tube videos and boy, does she have some opinions. And I was talking to her on the phone the other day and she was like, "Ugh!" Oh, and the ladies put the haul and they go all the way to Arizona just to shop. And I'm sitting there going, oh, I want to go to Arizona to shop. And she's like, we got to do that. <laughs> it's like, yeah, mom, we got to do that. That's funny though, because you think about, it doesn't make any sense. You should just stay home and then call and spend more money on stuff and have them ship it to you. But instead, you want to make a trip to the... You want to see it in person. You want to buy it in person. So I I would really like to go to a retreat. The more I hear about them, and especially after all the nice comments that I got on my first video, I'm just thinking people are so nice and so welcoming. And we could just sit around and... BS about stitching and wouldn't that be nice and you know just whatever like I would really really like to go to a retreat and before you suggest summer school I saw I, I saw registration was open I'm on the addicts newsletter email list and so I, I saw when that was going to be available but Ryan works uh, a sports car event at Road America in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin on that weekend. And and we go every year as a family because we can drive from Indianapolis. It's not that bad. It's like five hours or four if you're Michael Young. And we, so we'll take the kids that weekend. So I won't be able to go to summer school, which is fine. Uh, but I know that's the one that a lot of people are excited about. But I'm looking at, there's another that I have my eye on. So if when registration becomes open, available, and I feel I'm able to pay for that and that weekend is open to me, then I will register for that. But regardless, <laughs> I think my mom really wants to go to the attic. Like, what are you gonna stitch, mom? She says she wants to stitch a red sampler. She says she wants to stitch a red sampler before she dies. I'm like, okay, well, I can help you with that. And she's like, oh, really? Will you send me suggestions? So I sent her the link to Modern Folk Embroidery. When you go on their website, the, the designs are in a few different categories. And I think one of the categories is something like traditional style patterns, something like that. When you go to that, then you see a lot of like single color samplers. Some are red, some are not, but of course you can do them in red. So I sent my mom that link and she said that she liked a lot of those and I thought she would. <laughs> but then I, then I sent her, I don't remember the name, but one of the hats, red samplers, not Ruth Gibb and not Florence Law. I, I wasn't that nice. I sent her the one that's like really big. It's like, if you're feeling really ambitious, you can do this one. Uh, but I I really want to stitch Ruth Gibb. So that's on that's on my wish list is Ruth Gibb. And so I'm going to start Hannah Campbell. Uh, I thought it was going to be my birthday star. There's no way I'm waiting for that. So I'm going to start it when I finish a couple more things here. And if I feel comfortable with the 46, I will order a couple other hats with 46 count linen for those as well uh so ruth gibb is one that is on my wish list maria ewan the queen of the bay that i mentioned that was the one that i was considering before i just went ahead and got hannah campbell i do like that one i think is that the one that has the lord's prayer on it i think it is and 
normally I wouldn't pick something that has that on it, but as I said, because it's a reproduction sampler, I will just stitch it as is. I, I like the design of it. I like the trees on the side and the, and the border and the motifs throughout. Uh, I do like that one and it seems like a good size. Another one that's on my wish list is Ann Thomas. I love Ann Thomas. It's so pretty. That big old bird in the middle. I love it. And the flowers on the outside, it reminds me of both beautiful Rococo paintings and this hideous couch that my grandma had when I was growing up. It's like, you know, it's a healthy balance in between those two. But I love Rococo Baroque over the top fluffy flowers and clouds and all that crap. And Anne Thomas reminds me of that. It's like French over the top. I think it's English, right? But it, it looks, it's gaudy and I like it. So that one's on my wish list. And then another one that is really wild and really colorful is the Alexanders of Lintrathan. So funny story, we're gonna get into it here because I was thinking about this when I was stitching Thistle House and then also watching an old episode of Floss Tube. Brenda and Laura, one of them showed the pattern for the Alexanders. And I was like, oh, that's weird. But I looked it up. It was like alluring in some way. And I went on to the Hands Across the Sea website and for all of their patterns, they've got a bunch of information, uh, you know, whatever they may have about the girl or the family or whatever. And they seem to have a lot of information about the Alexanders and the parents and where people were from. But one thing that I noticed was that the mom, her name, I don't remember her first name, but her last name was Spaden. But then in parentheses, after that, they had splating. And I thought that might be Spalding, but the L and the A got mixed up. And the reason why I thought it was Spalding and not splating is because I've never heard the name splating, not to say there isn't such a name, but I have heard Spalding because my maiden name is Spalding. My maiden name is S-P-A-U-L-D-I-N-G and the mom of the Alexanders is S-P-A-L-D-I-N-G and if this is a Scottish sampler, which it makes sense it would, it is because they're from Linthraithen, right? So I thought, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look up, I'm gonna look up where Linthraithen is and I did and it is very near where the Spaldings of the Murray clan were situated in the Highlands. So now if I remember correctly, and I did, I did make a note of this. What did I do? Okay, yeah, I made a note because I wanted to get the, the cities right. Okay, so when you look at Scotland, it's broken up into Highlands and Lowlands-ish. And the Loch of Lintraithen is sort of situated north of Dundee, but then also east, am I getting this right? East of, what was it called? Dunkeld, okay, so I looked this up because I wanted to get it right. And that's like the area where the Spaldings were, Spaldings of the clan Murray of Athol. And mom, I don't wanna hear about the pronunciation, okay? We're basing this on that Patrick Dempsey movie. Um, so I think I, now correct me if I'm wrong, somebody, if you know this, but the Alexanders, if the mom is actually a Spalding and not a Splating, if she's actually a Spalding, cool, coolness, coolness. Yeah. So Alexanders is on my wish list too, with the 46 count, 103's mom make a note for Christmas, would you? <laughs> when we go to the attic. <laughs> Um, I just thought that was neat. It's neat. Cool stuff. I don't know how people find this information because also on the website it said something about the census and I was like, well, let me find that. I couldn't find 
whatever census they were talking about. They said the 1831 census, but I think perhaps it had information maybe about the kids rather than the parents, John and, I forget her name, Miss Spaulding. Uh, so it's, it's really interesting when you get into this stuff. Just to think that 200 years ago, oh, yeah, and that was another thing. I found on eBay, I told my mom about this, I found on eBay, you know, you never know what's going to end up on there. But a couple months ago, I found an antique sampler and it was looking pretty rough. But it was big and it was intact and it had these beautiful motifs. It had flowers in pots and it had trees and it had a couple people at the bottom and it had a border around and a dividing border throughout. And the girl who stitched it, she not only put her name, Ms. Pepper, I forget her first name, but she, and she stitched the year, but she also stitched the date that she finished it, which was my birthday. And I really, really wanted it. And it was like cheapish as far as uh, antique samplers go, but it was like right in that window where it's tax season and we owe a crap ton of money because Ryan is an independent contractor and nothing is withheld. And for the CPAs out there, I don't want to hear it. I, I know, I know, we know, we know, okay, we know. So it was like I couldn't spend money on any unnecessary thing. I told my mom about this. So she's like, well, why didn't you call me? I would have bought it for you. I was like, because I didn't need it. But now it's freaking on my mind all the time. Ryan and I went to an antique shop when we were in New Orleans, and I told him about it then. He was like, oh, I think he's probably forgot about it by now. But I haven't. It's annoying. It's like an earwig. So I might, and I might never have an antique in my collection, and that's okay, because I get to, I get to stitch my own for these, you know, these people who have made, who have made patterns based on, based on antiques, so, so we get to, we get to make my, our own future antiques, right? I think that was one thing my mom was thinking. She said she wanted to do a red sampler before she died, and I think she was just hoping that something of hers would live on. I mean, that's what I think. I think about my death a lot, probably more than I should. But, you know, my mom knits all these socks, but eventually socks wear out. But you wear them and you love them and and then they're nice and but they wear out. If you have something that's going to go on a wall and presumably if it's taken care of will last many, many generations. <sighs> that's my PSA, I guess. Oh, and before people ask it's another male hill kit. It's really old. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Happy hunting on eBay. It might be on there. I looked up the, the chicken pin. Somebody had asked about this. He's adorable, but he's not. I, I couldn't find him. I looked on eBay to try to help you out and send you a link or something if I had magically found him. But he's just a cute little chicken. They do have other chickens, though, and you can easily fashion them into a pin. Anyway, it's going on an hour and a half here with this video. So I have gone far beyond what I expected, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. So many of you said that you liked my stories and my sense of humor and stuff. So I hope, I hope I provided that again this time. I was really nervous doing this second one. The first one, I just kind of like plopped down and talked about whatever. Uh, but this one, I felt like I, was, oh, I got a plan. What am I going to talk about? I'm going to pick out a pin to wear. But I, I enjoy talking about this. And I will have more stuff to talk about next time. I think my plan is to do one of these videos every three weeks. I was, go I was planning on four weeks. But then if I had waited for the four-week mark, we'd be in France. So I would have to do it earlier or later necessarily anyway. So I thought let's just do three weeks and then actually throughout the summer, the, the three week mark works better than other things. But I think doing this every three weeks, I will have progress to show you. I will have a finish to show you and I will probably have purchases to show you as well. Uh, I don't buy a ton of stuff, but you know, it might be something as small as a new pattern or something, you know, just whenever I whenever I happen to get something. I've got a lot of things on my wish list. Uh, there, are, there are some things that are priorities over others. As I say, the hands across the seas that I talked about, those are definitely like, I wanna get them, 
before they're gone. The Florence Mary Dickinson that is a Hobby House exclusive, it's in my Hobby House cart because they actually have an online cart. The thing about the attic is you have to call or email your, your order, which is fine. And as I said, Barb was nice as pie and she helped me out and it was cheaper than I expected. So I was delighted. Uh, but Hobby House, you can order easily through their website. And so I have some things in my cart and I just want them. Florence Mary Dickinson, because it's an exclusive and it's really pretty. It's not like, oh, I got to get it because I can't get it from anywhere else. I actually really like it. So that's on my list as well. There are some other things that I like from Brenda Gervais and oh, there are new Teresa Kogut's out, but I'm, I, I like them all, but I'm not going to buy them all. So I was trying to decide, well, what do I actually want to finish? What do I envision seeing in my home from the things that she's put out? There are new Plum Streets out. So there's a lot of stuff to buy but you just can't buy everything. But I would say the hats are on top of my list. And I'd really like, it's totally unnecessary, but I'd really like a pair of nice scissors. Scissors that I have are fine. And like if TSA decides to confiscate them, it's not going to be the end of the world because I think they were $8. If that. But I'd like a nice pair of scissors for at-home stitching. I would. So that's on my list. Anyway, <laughs> God, now I hear it every time I say it. Oh, well, if you guys enjoyed this, I, I'm so, like I say, I'm delighted for those of you who actually watched the first one and sat through, sat through all that, but who liked, commented, and subscribed and found me on Instagram. Thank you so much. I am Stitch Stitch Bead on Instagram. Uh, my name is Audrey Marine. It's M-Y-R-E-H-N. I don't know why that's the pronunciation. Ugh. So find me on Instagram. Subscribe here if you want to. Leave a comment. I will try to respond to the comments as they come in. However, on Monday afternoon, Ryan and I are headed overseas. We're headed to France. So I don't know how much I'm going to be able to respond to comments in the coming 10, 12 days or whatever it is. But when I get back, I will, I will see those and I will be very happy. And as I say, you know, when they were coming in, <clears throat> I posted the first video on the 13th, I think it was that Saturday, and it took a couple days but then it was like that Tuesday, everything was coming in. I was getting followers and I was getting comments and it was so nice. And I really needed a boost that day. It was kind of a crappy day. And besides being stressed out about stuff, I was working on um, finishing up a, a room here in the house and getting it ready for guests who were coming to stay for the 500. And uh, we had five different people in and out of our house for that weekend and and it was fine we handled it it was a lot but but uh it was just a lot so I just want to say thank you again for all those comments who were very nice uh and I will talk to you guys in three weeks hopefully and I should have lots more stuff to show you so thank you again and happy stitching